Okay. So I'm gonna get set up here to do some stripping. I know I'm off camera a little bit, but I'm gonna get this area good to go. So one thing to make sure you do when you're using strippers, especially if you're indoors at all, is to actually make sure you have breathing protection. Uh, the chemical strippers I'm using are not uh, nice products, uh, so if you don't have that, you want to make sure you have a, some way to protect yourself from the vapors. So I'm going to put my respirator on, and then I'm also going to be wearing chemical resistant gloves. So I'll go through that process. This is the stripper I'm using. It's a Jasco paint and epoxy remover, and it's been recommended by other piano restoration experts that I've followed and learned from. You can get it at most big box stores. So I'll show you the overall process that I follow for stripping these parts. I've got some of the stripper poured out into the can that I'm holding onto there and I'm brushing on a, a thick coat onto the part that I need to strip. Uh, and so the, the thicker the coat, the less likely it will be to dry out in the, the time it needs to set to be effective. Uh, so I just go through and I brush it on the surfaces where I need to strip off the finish. And that's what you can see here. And, and I'm using just an old, <laughs> an old paintbrush that I don't care about anymore. And I've actually cut much of the, most of the bristles off. Um, to give it a little bit more bite as I'm you know, using it to apply the stripper and in case I need to actually get some scrubbing action with it. Uh, so you can see I've sped up the video and uh, really this is just because it's a fairly monotonous process. Just going through and applying the stripper to all the components. Um, if I can set up a few at a time to do then, then that helps me be a little bit more efficient and less waiting time in between parts. Um, and so at this point you want to let the stripper sit, uh, it says for 15 minutes, you don't want to let it go dry so just watch it if you can. And then I'm going through with steel wool and some putty knives um, to scrape and remove any of the finish. I'm not working excessively hard, I'm letting the stripper do the work and essentially just then you know, using the, the steel wool and the putty knives to just remove anything that's already loosened up or started to dissolve away. Uh, so that's what I'm doing, and you don't get it all in the first coat. You'll have to go back through and do multiple coats. Uh, so you can see me reapplying the stripper every time I, uh, you know, I get done with one set. Uh, so that really, you just go through this process now. Uh, this is all sped up so you can see it. I'll slow it down here uh, in just a little bit so you can see kind of a, I guess, closer to real time speed. Um, but just going down all the surfaces. Um, and I'm using number three steel wool, uh, so it's a fairly coarse, kind of a paint removal grade steel wool. Um, so just go through everywhere and and uh, work those surfaces over, and then when you've gotten all the stripper off, uh, go apply another coat and keep repeating that process until you're done. Okay, so here is a close-up view of one of the arms, and this is more of a real-time view. Uh, so you can see I've let the stripper sit, and now I'm going through with that number three steel wool and I'm removing the stripper uh, from the surface. I'm wor working it into the uh, you know the original finish there and this is after two or three applications. Um, it's hard to see in the video but as you're doing this you'll kind of notice that a lot of the the finish comes off as you go through with the steel wool um, and you can see it's going away over time here. Once the steel wool is done, I switch over to paper towels, and this is to remove any of the residual um, gunk that's left behind from the stripper and the finish that's been kind of liquefied. So getting rid of all that old finish and stripper just allows the part to dry and be able to be used once the stripping application is done. So here are those pieces that I was stripping before. Um, these probably have two or three coats of stripper applied and scraped off um, using just uh, mostly steel wool by hand. Uh, and I would say these are pretty close. I'm going to go maybe one more coat uh, just to get some of the black that you see on the right edge of this arm piece. 
this piece of the fallboard here behind me looks like it's pretty much completely stripped. Um, the fallboard pieces, I don't know if they had a, a different piece of veneer, but they are much darker than the rest of the piano pieces, even though they're stripped and they don't have any more of the finish behind. Um, so that's why it looks uh, looks kind of more reddish, darker colored. Um, but those are down to wood. And then here's the other arm that I was working on. Uh, so these both have turned out pretty good. This, this is uh, about two days later, so they've had a chance to dry out and uh, kind of even out a little bit. Um, I would say they're almost good enough to start sanding, but there was a little bit of, of the old finish left behind when I was doing this last time. So I'll probably do one more application of the stripper when I have time on these parts. And in general, that process that I was using is just going to get repeated for every piece on the piano. Um, everything the previous owner of this piano attempted going through and stripping and did a lot of the work. I'd say it's it's probably 95 or higher percent uh, stripped already. Uh, but there are areas where there's still a little bit of the old paint remnants or some of the old finish left behind. So that's why I'm going through piece by piece and just going through and stripping it, making sure it really is back down to the wood before I start sanding and staining and refinishing. So, um, you know, this, this batch of pieces is good, uh, or pretty much good to go. I will follow the same process on the rest. And, um, it's, it's kind of a hard process to videotape because as I'm doing it, I have, uh, you know, chemicals and wearing gloves and don't want to get that on my camera equipment, um, and stuff like that. So I will probably not necessarily show every piece of being stripped, um, in general, this stripping process and, uh, maybe even a certain degree some of the sanding work um, is just going to be getting done as I have time in between other activities and it's going to take a while so it's just really just a quick update kind of highlights the process and then uh, going from here uh, and just continuing on throughout the rest of the piano so there we go this is a collection of more parts that I've already got stripped uh, so kind of on the far left, that's the music desk. And then that curved piece next to it is the front part of the fallboard. Uh, this fallboard on this piano has two pieces and it hinges in the middle. Uh, so on the table, I had the, the rear piece or the, the piece that's maybe closest to the soundboard of the piano. And then this curved part here is the fallboard front piece. And then next to that is the, I guess the rail. I don't know what the, the technical term for it would be, but it's the piece of wood that goes on top of the keys between the keys and the fallboard. Uh, so that piece has been stripped. And then I have a couple of the panels. The larger rectangular panels are um, the insert panels from the kneeboard. So those have both been stripped. Uh, I've started some of the sanding on that. I got more sanding to go. And then the two uh, skinnier rectangular pieces are the side pieces that go next to the kneeboard uh, and were glued onto the sides previously. And then that longer piece on the top is the is the key slip, and that's been stripped also. Um, in general, I haven't done much sanding yet. I've done a few pieces just to test it out, but uh, for the most part, I'm just working through getting all these pieces stripped so I can do any repairs and sanding work that's necessary. And just to maybe close out the picture a little bit, <clears throat> this is the... Uh, work area I've got set up in the back garage uh, so you can see on that bench there against the wall I've got piano parts um, I've got some of the smaller parts sitting up there I've got the um, I guess the key bed sitting up there as well and then the arms or the decorative uh, arms are sitting there waiting to be stripped and finished and then on the shelves on the wall I have some of the other pieces pieces I haven't got to yet I do have the kneeboard up there. Um, I stripped that, I sanded it, and I put some stain samples on. Uh, I haven't come back to that yet though since then. And then my, I've got a kind of a messy work area here, but I do have, uh, you know, this is a spot that I can put pieces on to, you know, disassemble any hardware, um, just a general workspace. So I've been using that as of late. That's kind of why I've got stuff out there. And then if I roll around here to the left, and I've got my keyboard and the action, so the keys and the uh, you know key rails and all that. I got some old shirts here that I can use for scraping, and I've been doing some work on my 
buffing wheel to get that set up as you can see here all the keys with the new key tops um, I still need to do bushings and things like that but that's where I'm at on those uh, the action I I'm not planning on doing any of the work on the action until after I get the piano refinished uh, so it's just sitting here for now <clears throat> more work to come on that later so it's kind of just a quick progress update um, if I come down through here you can see a piano on the tilter and that's where I've been doing a lot of the, the stripping and sanding work here in the front garage as well. So still a lot of work to go. This is really just kind of a quick update. Um, I'll be doing a lot of stripping and sanding work um, and that'll continue on here for a while. Okay, so this is the kneeboard on the piano. And what I've done is I spent some time stripping it and I've just gone through and I've sanded it now with 120 grit and then 220 and I'm going to do some stain testing on this. So I've got a set of Minwax stains here. These are all oil stains. I'm going to test these samples and if I don't like any of these then we might start mixing them but we want to go with a very very dark brown finish so I've selected mocha, dark walnut, Jacko Bean, Ebony, and even True Black just to see if that gets us anything we want. So I think between these dark brown colors and the True Black, we can probably come up with an option here to uh, get us what we need. So I'm gonna get set up and we might, and we'll get ready to do some stain test next. Okay, so I've got the stain samples on and I'm letting them soak for about 15 minutes uh, before I wipe them off. So just in order here, we've got mocha, and then dark walnut, then we have jacko bean, followed by ebony, followed by true black. So I'm going to give these guys a little bit longer. Um, they're maybe five or so minutes into their 15 minutes before I come back and wipe them down and see what they look like. Um, kind of without having the excess just sit on the surface here. Maybe it's a little bit hard to tell in the video, um, but this Jacko Bean has a nice in-person almost, almost black look to it without looking black. Dark Walnut's a little more brown. This mocha color could also be good. It's a pretty dark brown. Um, we'll just have to see here when they have some more time. Ebony honestly looks pretty good too because I can still see some of the wood coming through that. It doesn't come across well in the video like it does in person. but uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be crazy about the true black, but if I like any of these browns, potentially I could use this for a mix. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so a quick little update. Um, this half of the piano, I had different samples going, but what ended up happening is I tried to put some mineral spirits on to see what it might look like once the finish is applied, and it just caused all these stains to blend together. So, oops on my part. But when we looked at it before we, um, before I did that, we kind of had narrowed down to liking the ebony. Um, so then I started working on over here some blends of the ebony in different ratios with Jacko Bean and with Mocha. So that's right here we had a 50-50 Ebony and Jacko Bean. This one is a two-thirds Ebony, one-third Jacko Bean. And then as I came down the line here, uh, two-thirds Ebony, one-third Mocha. And then a 50-50 Ebony and Mocha. And then this one up here again is just a straight up Ebony. What I think we're going to go with actually is this 50-50 Ebony and Mocha. Um, my camera can't quite capture the light, but we brought this in the living room and we just liked the liked the color tone it gave and the darkness in, you know, with her furniture and in the living room. So I think that's what we're going to go for. We wanted to stick with brown, but we wanted it to be a very dark, almost black. Uh, but as we looked at these other two that are a little bit darker, it seemed like a uh, our dark wood floors might be a little bit too matchy matchy with this, so we're going with uh, 
We're going to go with this 50-50 blend of ebony and mocha, and that's what we'll put on it.